Hello everyone and welcome to the special episode of Wenex TV where we're doing a Q&A video on the questions that were submitted on the channel's community page. First of all, I'd like to thank everybody for the continuous support this channel has had since the very beginning. Our first video was in January 2021. Ever since then, Wenex TV has had a small but loyal group of supporters for which I'm very grateful as we are slowly but steadily getting bigger by the day. So if you are a long time subscriber, thank you so much. It really means a lot. You're the backbone of this channel week in and week out and I really appreciate it. If you are new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the bell button so that you don't miss the new content, which I generally put out either weekly or bi-weekly. It's going a little bit slower at the moment because of the summer season in which my job is very time consuming, but soon enough we'll be back on the regular schedule. So with that being said, let's begin. So the first question comes from Jay Steventon. There seems to be lots of evidence for Mycenaean contact and expansion eastwards, but how far west did they go? So after the collapse of the Minoan civilization, the Mycenaeans took over in the late 15th century BCE and expanded on the old Minoan uh, trade or commercial routes and to the west that stretched through the southern Italy and went all the way to southern Iberia or Spain. There are remnants of the Mycenaean pottery that have been found along the Guadalavir River which uh, is in southern Spain where the later civilization of Tartessos would thrive for centuries. So I would say that it's pretty safe to assume that the Mycenaean Greeks went all the way to the southern Spain and uh, to the pillars of Heracles and so forth. Alejandro Kaplan, are you planning on covering more of the Bronze Age world? The answer is yes, 100%. So besides the Mycenaean Greece, which we cover permanently on the channel, right now in the works is a series, a big series on another Bronze Age civilization, which will be coming shortly. So stay tuned. The Foxtrot Ghost. How do you create your maps? There's a whole process of how I create the maps. So I have four or five maps that I've created from the scratch that I use permanently for most of the videos on the channel. Uh, I did everything in Photoshop. I did the boundaries between sea and land first, then added the rivers then added the relief and the cities, each and every city I did individually as well as mountains, uh, the territories of kingdoms and so on and so on. It's a long and painful process, so I did everything myself. Averroes Claire, are the classic sources reliable for reconstructing the Greek Bronze Age? The classical sources talk about the Bronze Age as great old heroic times. They're filled with mythology, so I'll be very careful with that. Greek Bronze Age ended during the 12th century BCE, while the Greek alphabet appears at about 800 BCE. So there are four centuries of disparity in which the stories about the past and contemporary events were orally passed down. Guillermo has three questions actually. First, do you believe that Philistines were from Crete? Second, could Heracles been based on the real person? And third, do you know they are bringing back Greek god worship and what do you think about it? So first, that's a possibility, it's hard to say. Although it does seem that the Philistines came from a place that was in some way influenced by or perhaps was a part of the Mycenaean culture. They did appear to build Megaron style buildings at least early on. Their early pottery of the late Bronze and early Iron Age does resemble the late Mycenaean pottery of the time of its collapse. There are theories about the Pelasgians, theories about Crete, but it's definitely possible that early Philistines came from a Mycenaean influenced area and eventually blended into the native cultures. About Heracles, another impossible to answer question. He could have been based on a real person, perhaps a warlord or a ruler that for some reason transitioned into probably the most legendary figure of the Greek mythology. Either way, whether he was just a mythological character or in fact based on a real person, he was held in an immensely high regard by the Greeks. And third, about the modern Greek god worship, I do know that the Greek government officially recognized it as a religion. Aristomenes, are you Greek? Interesting question, but no, I'm not. Mercy and Thane, was there anything close to a high kingship among the Mycenaean society? 
The Mycenaean title of Wanax or later Anax is considered by the scholars to mirror a position of a high king. In the Iliad, Agamemnon holds the title of Anax, which is superior to the title of Basileus, held by all other regional Achaean leaders or minor kings. Also in the contemporary Bronze Age records, the Hittite sources record numerous letters of correspondence between Hittite and Achaean kings, and in those letters, the Achaean kings are referred to as great kings, both by the Hittites and by the Achaeans themselves. So the answer is yes. Michael Lang, huge fan of the channel, some rapid-fire questions. Is there any evidence of any overlap between historicity and mythology in the time period surrounding the eruption of Thera? Apophis is suggested to have ruled the Hyksos in Avaris around this time, and some believe that Apophis may have been the same person as Epaphos. Do the wanderings of Io or the involvement of the Near East play into this? Are there any other flood or disaster myths that might relate to the eruption? And could the Titanomachy or Gigantomachy be attempts at reconciling the eruption? So the eruption of Thera happened in about 1600 BCE. At the time the Mycenaean Linear B did not exist, so there is no contemporary written evidence about it on the part of the Mycenaeans. And the Minoan Linear A, which was in use at the time, has not been deciphered yet. The Hellenic alphabet appears at around 800 BCE, so tying any mythological event precisely to the eruption, I mean, we can only speculate. Regarding Apophis or Apepi, he ruled in the 16th century BCE, so I'm not sure of any knowledge that the Mycenaeans had of him at the time and vice versa, but again, you never know. Luis Aldamis has sent a huge piece of text right here which I read, but I'm not going to repeat the whole thing for the video. He's basically asking for my perspective on the possible historical basis for the Atlantis myth and also for my perspective on the Bronze Age Greco-Iberian interactions, possible interactions that served as foundations for Heracles' myths about his adventures to Iberia, Pillars of Heracles and so forth. There are many theories of what served as an inspiration to Plato for the Atlantis story. You offer so much information, some of which I wasn't aware of. I think that one of the events that could have served as a possible inspiration to Plato was the destruction of the polis of Heliki by a tsunami which happened in 373 BCE, which was during Plato's lifetime. Regarding the Greco-Iberian relations in the Bronze Age, it's hard to really assess them beyond the existence of trade routes, but obviously the knowledge of the Mycenaeans of the existence of such a distant place as Iberia alone could have served as an inspiration. Ralph Satterfield can we have a video or series of videos depicting the difference between original Greek mythologies and the Roman versions by the likes of Ovid? That's an interesting idea for a video, it's possible. Theoharis Varivulis, how similar were the Mycenaean Greek compared to the classical Greek? And how similar was the Mycenaean civilization compared to other Indo-European civilizations of the same era? I'm assuming that you talk about the Mycenaean civilization in general in both questions. The Mycenaean Greece of the Bronze Age was a very different environment compared to the classical Greece. The Mycenaeans consisted of numerous palace centers, each probably under a hereditary ruler, but likely limited in power compared to the king of Mycenae, who held some kind of a hegemonic position which is clear when corresponding to the external powers such as the Hittites. Out of all other Bronze Age civilizations, the Mycenaeans were the most similar to the Minoans, who preceded them on Crete, who were also based on politically and economically connected palace centers, with Knossos as their capital. Classical Greece, in contrast, was a very heterogeneous place, consisting of a great number of totally independent city-states, each with its own laws, customs, systems of government and their own interests. Thomas Hardy, did any Greek colonies turn against their mother polis and have intense rivalry or even animosity? And also after Rome took southern Italy, how long was Greek the lingua franca? 
Was Greek always the dominant language until the 12th century AD or did it become the dominant language again after the Western Roman Empire fell and only the Eastern Roman Empire remained? The first such situation that instantly comes to mind were Corinth and Corcyra. Corcyra was a city-state on the island of Corfu and was founded as a colony of Corinth, but grew to have great animosity with the Corinthians, with the two sides ultimately going to war and were generally opposed to each other during the classical times. As for the Greek language, it was a dominant language in the urban areas in southern Greece and Sicily, Latin was obviously the lingua franca of the Roman Empire as well as the language of military. However, Greek did hold a special position of prestige in the Roman society and as such was not repressed in favor of Latin, plus after the later Byzantine reconquest of much of Italy and the movement of additional Greek speakers to the area, it only strengthened the position of the Greek language. Later during the Middle Ages, especially after the loss of Byzantine possessions in Italy, Greek language would gradually lose ground to varieties of vulgar Latin that went on to become different dialects of the Italian language. However, in some areas, variants of Greek are still spoken today. Zeus Helios, pick which one of these questions you find interesting. One. Do we have any evidence of ancient Egyptian interest in the Trojan War? 2. Is there any evidence of Mycenaean warriors acting as mercenaries in the Near East? 3. What are your thoughts on the idea that Plato's myth of Atlantis at its core a folk memory of the Achaean War with the Minoan civilization? And 4. What are your sources? So 1. The contemporary Egyptian sources mention a confederation that we today call the Sea Peoples. The inscription dating to 1175 BCE during the reign of Ramses III mentions these peoples destroying the lands of Arzawa, Alasia, Hatti and others on their way to Egypt. Arzawa did not exist as a political unit at this time, being divided into several Hittite vassal states, so you potentially could argue that the Egyptians were aware of Troy and nearby cities and kingdoms being destroyed, but apparently not with any particular interest. Two, we do know that some members of the Sea People, specifically the Sheridan, served as mercenaries in the Near East, including Egypt, but we can only speculate at this point about who they were. Three, about Atlantis, I've already answered that. And four, the sources that I use depend on the content that I'm working on. And if you're looking for some of those books and have difficulty finding them, let me know. Ajit Sidhu. Please do on the different types of Greek statues, Greek influence in India and Bronze Age warfare. Shout out to Ajit Sidhu, very persistent in his suggestions about Indo-Greek content. It's definitely going to come at some point in time, as well as Bronze Age warfare, including a video on the Mycenaean military. Matthew Andrews, I'm interested to know how important of a role does Apollon or Apollo play in modern Hellenic culture? While Apollo, like other Olympian gods and overall Greek mythology, are an important part of the Hellenic tradition and culture even today, perhaps not so much in the religious sense, but definitely in a cultural sense. You can find small Greek statues of the Olympian gods to buy in every corner of Greece. Odysseus has no less than five questions. First, do you think there is a connection between the Greek tribes mentioned among the sea peoples by Merneptah and Ramses III and the tales of the various heroes showing up in Egypt around the time of the Trojan War? Also, the Cretan lie of Odysseus seems to reflect the piratical nature of Greek seafaring in the late Bronze Age. Second, do you believe that some of the legends such as the burning of Phaetion and the floods of Deucalion and Dardanos have been inspired in any way by the Thera eruption? Third, would you be interested in exploring the possible historical background or inspiration for legends such as that of Io and Danaeus, as well as their more obscure versions that seem to be related to the island of Euboea? Four, would you be interested in making a video about the origins and possible inspiration for tales of mythical creatures such as the Gorgons and the Cyclopes? And five, 
The Greek Bronze Age is often overlooked and most people think of the classical age when hearing about the various heroes of old. It is really nice to see a channel that explores the subjects in such depth. What inspired you to make it? So first, it's possible there are various Greek myths taking place in Egypt and yes, piracy did seem to be a part of the Mycenaean seafaring activities. Second, already answered a question about Thera eruption, we can only speculate. Third, well, I love Greek mythology and perhaps in future we could have a special series dedicated to interesting stories about Greek mythology. Fourth, this pretty much falls within the answer number three, or perhaps a separate series on mythological creatures, we will talk about it more in the future and see where we stand. And fifth, I've always loved both Greek history and mythology, and I also happened to be decent in animating since high school, and I myself watched and still watch a lot of other animated history channels, and one day I thought, well, let's give it a shot. I'm going to create my own platform and do my own content, and that's pretty much it. History with Sai, you have done a phenomenal job covering in so much detail the world of the ancient Aegean, better than the other channels I've come across, thank you. Would love to see you cover other parts of the world in your style of narration and filmmaking. Any plans to expand to other areas of the globe? Shout out to History with Sai, one of the best history channels on YouTube. If you haven't already subscribed to him, please do. History with Sai has helped this channel since the very beginning and we do have one collaboration video called Sparta and the Messenian Wars which is available on History with Sai's channel so please check it out. Regarding the answer to the question, I do plan to expand to other areas, I'd like to and eventually I will do content on something entirely different. At the moment another Bronze Age civilization is being worked on, but as you know the Mycenaean Greece and more broadly ancient Greece is really the backbone of the channel. Carolus Doria, love your channel more than a question, how about a petition? The Tibet or Epic Cycle would be an awesome series of videos, I've been studying the remaining works of Sophocles and the rest of the lot, pretty awesome content. That for sure would require the whole series and honestly that's something that I've had in mind since the beginning. The only problem is the schedule which is planned in advance, but hopefully we can get it done at some point next year. And Rajan Partiman. Who were the Dorians and did they have something to do with the Bronze Age collapse? Where did Homer get all the names of characters such as Achilles, Hector, Astyanax, Andromache, Helen, Agamemnon? And were these characters completely made up or were they based on people who lived during the period of the Trojan War around 1250 BC? These are good questions. First, it's hard to say. Dorian identity generally is not considered to have existed in late Bronze Age but thought to be formed sometime later on, perhaps early in the Dark Ages. And second, about the heroes' names, I would say in situations like these, it would be natural that some of the characters would be based on historical figures, to different degrees depending on the character in question of course, while some of them would be made up in order to make for a better story. So which characters were made up and which ones were real, that's a question for which we need more evidence in order to answer. For example, somebody like Agamemnon seems to have been deeply stuck in oral tradition of different parts of Greece already before the Iliad was written down. It would be hard for all these different parts of Greece, from Sparta to the Aeolian colonies, to simultaneously preserve a memory of him, knowing how little connection these areas had during the Dark Ages, without him being based on a real Mycenaean ruler during the time of the conflict. Also the geographical places that Homer gives out, some of those cities collapsed at the end of the Bronze Age and weren't even rebuilt, so it's astonishing how precisely they are presented in Homer's catalogue of ships, according to their actual size and importance that they had back in the Bronze Age. 
For example, Mycenae 100 ships, Argolis 80 ships, Pylos 90, Crete 80, Ithaca only 12 and so on. So Homer definitely did have access to some kind of list or at least information in order to compile a list with such precise locations and relative power and importance of those locations in the Bronze Age. So if Homer at the same time comes with a full list of rulers and leaders for each and every one of those locations, he probably did not just make it up. So there we go, all the questions have been answered. I'd like to welcome Labelle Olmier, a new member of our Patreon community. If you haven't joined, please consider doing so. A lot of news and Patreon-only content are underway. Also, I'd like to thank History with Sai, Nico, Chris Ernst, Panayotis Yanopoulos, Fred Lecky, Tim Lane, ABC Shake, Derek Wildstar, Padre91, Arguris Margaritis, Huel Sally Briggs, Vineyard Illumination and Estate Care for their continuous support. Stay tuned, more content is coming. This was a special episode of 1X TV and we'll see you again soon.